<clears throat> All right, let's talk a little bit about what to do with typography. Um, in my previous lecture, I mentioned the idea of effective typography. And I, effective typography essentially is broken down into five different elements. It's about breaking your message into basic concepts. It's about proximity to relate similar items uh, or concepts together. Proximity means simply holding it together into one place. Um, we have hierarchy. Hierarchy is essentially emphasizing words or phrases that are more important. Um, and this is what I call emphasis de-emphasis. So if it's important, we emphasize it. And if it's not so important, we de-emphasize it. We'll talk about this. Um, we will use alignment to visually structure the message to make it easier to scan. When we first work with the sequence, we won't really be thinking too much about alignment. We're really looking more about placement and type treatment and so on and so forth. <clears throat> but when we get to the final five sequence, we will be looking at alignment and structure to tighten up the designs to make them look like they were intentional rather than simply uh, experiments. And then the last tool that you get in effective typography is type treatments, especially creative type treatments. Um, type treatments are basically adding color, texture, a different typeface, some effect, something that makes that word or phrase stand out graphically from the other elements on the page. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, it's um, typography is basically, it's a creative medium. And so we are essentially going to be painting with type, if you will, as we develop the message and it gets more ambitious and a little bit more crazy, I guess, it's going to get a little more abstract. And as it reaches that point of falling off the cliff, it becomes more and more abstract and less and less like a message. Now, what, what we do when we are building up to the point where we're getting close to the cliff, <clears throat> we are using type both syntactically and semantically. What does that mean? Semantics are what a word means. You know, uh, it's like the word um, bear. Well, a bear could be a bear, like a bear, or it could be, you know, bearing arms, or it could be bearing a baby. Um, <clears throat> And so words, even though they may look the same, have different meanings. So the semantics of what we do with our phrasing and the way we structure our sentences and so on, we enhance the semantics so that the meaning of our message is clearer. Okay, now the next concept we have is syntax. Syntax is essentially the order of the words. Now, syntax is going to become important in this project because as we start to pull the message apart and push it around in different places and play around with the hierarchy and so on, the syntax is going to start to break down because normally we would expect to see one line of text and that's going to be our concept. But as we start playing around with the words and we start playing around with line breaks and so on, that syntax is going to get disturbed. So our goal is to try and hold the semantics and the syntax together for as long as possible, but still get creative with how we're handling it. Now, as the syntax breaks down, as we get closer and closer to the cliff, the syntax is going to get a little weird. There's no question that it's going to get harder and harder to figure out what words come before and what words come after. Um, and that's going to be probably the first thing that basically becomes, you know, unintelligible, if you will. And that's okay, because we do want to reach that point where it starts to come apart. However, semantics is something that if we use creative type treatments carefully, the semantics will carry through and we'll actually be able to kind of glean the essence of the message through the semantics, even though the syntax and the actual message itself is becoming a little bit abstract. We are also going to be dealing with legibility. Legibility is the ability to decipher the words. Um, that means you can see them, right? Um, <clears throat> white letters on a white background 
are illegible, right? They're white letters like if they're on a white cloud. If you have white letters on a black background, there's good contrast and the legibility is increased. So legibility is all about being able to actually see the words. Okay, and we're going to be dealing with that because as this becomes a little more abstract, as the message gets more ambitious, our legibility is going to start to suffer to some degree. We're going to be using overlap and transparency and blends, and that's going to start to hurt the actual legibility of the words. Our other tool is readability. Went out of order there, but oh well. Um, our, our last tool is readability. And readability is simply, can you read it? <laughs> you know, are the words big enough? Very often you'll see little fine print on a bottle and you're going, huh? You know, you're trying to figure out what it says. It's not readable because it's too dang small, right? Um, are the letters intact? You know, in other words, you know, have they been destroyed or distorted in some way? Um, the spacing between letters and words can affect readability. If you have a word and you're using extreme letter spacing, the letters become individual elements and they stop becoming a word. That hurts readability. Even though you can see it, it's not like you can read it, right? So there's a variety of things that impact readability. These two elements are going to also be... Um, you know, factors in our, in the overall success of our project. Again, we're going to want to hold on to readability and legibility as long as we can, but at a certain point, both of these are going to suffer as well. And that's okay because we're going to be reaching the cliff, we're going to be falling off the cliff, and then we're going to be basically painting with type. All right, so let's take a look at what these concepts look like. Okay, so Remember our basic concepts. I'm going to kind of go back and forth between these two things here a little bit. So our basic concepts are breaking it down into the basic concepts, right? So that simply means breaking it down into usually sentences. That's the easiest way of doing it. But often breaking it into phrases is another good way of just beginning to break your information down into a logical, into a logical, um, you know, organization. The next thing we might think about is proximity. Proximity is when things are related together. So very often your concepts are going to create a sense of proximity, but you have to make it into a proximity. In other words, you could have things flying all over the place and breaking down your syntax, so to speak. But if you keep your concepts together, proximity helps your ideas be more clear. Okay. Our next idea is hierarchy. Hierarchy is simply, like I said, emphasizing words that are important and de-emphasizing words that are less important. So that's a very easy way of handling your content. Soldiers, important, right? Don't give yourself to brutes, right? So basically they're saying despise, enslave, regiment your lives. So what this designer has done is basically figured out the things that they want to have be important. And those are the elements that are going to get larger and larger and more dominant as the sequence moves forward. So that sense of hierarchy and emphasis, de-emphasis is crucial to keeping your uh, message powerful and scannable. Okay, and scannable essentially, as I said earlier, is the ability to simply scan the message. We don't necessarily want to have to read every single word. I mean, certainly you can, but if we can make it scannable and the person, your viewer, can grab the idea right away and hold it, then they may be more inclined to dive in and actually get into the details. Okay, so... Um, like I mentioned, alignment is one of those uh, tools that we'll use to tighten up the design. Um, and we'll talk more about that in, uh, in, the second, uh, in the second sequence. But for now, what we can do is think about what happens when you align things. And so uh, let's see, what am I doing here? I'm looking for, I'm looking for, I'm looking for my tools. There we are keep moving things around here. So let's grab a line very quickly and let's talk about alignment. Now, this may or may not be the best solution for alignment, but let's take a look at something like this. Every word has a perimeter on it, 
And so that perimeter can then be extended to create alignment opportunities. So as we start thinking about, you know, tightening up a design using alignment, what we do then is we use these little guides, if you will, and you say, wow, power maybe ought to be nudged over a little bit. You know, it's looking good over here. Maybe the Y in you, maybe you needs to be scooched over a little teeny bit. Um, you know, then you take the word like you and see if there's anything in there. So you're basically just hunting around for what I call intuitive, um, intuitive uh, organization or intuitive structure. And, um, and what it does is it just helps you to just essentially figure stuff out. It's like, okay, you know, that kind of works there. Maybe free and beautiful ought to be tucked over there too. Maybe adventure should be tucked over to this one. So there's a lot of different ways that we can use alignment to help our design become more and more and more organized. And then it looks like it's intentional as opposed to simply a um, uh, an experiment. Now, I don't necessarily want you to focus on alignment right now. That's really one of those things that we'll get to when we get to our final five sequence. But it's something that, you know, keep it in mind as you um, as you move forward, but don't be driven by it. Um, semantics, remember, we talked about that. And basically, it depends on your message. You know, if the semantics are pretty clear, then it'll be pretty easy to, you know, to uh, determine what that is. Semantics, of course, also means trying to find the words and emphasizing those. And then if you have the right words emphasized, then your semantic meaning of your message, the overall semantic meaning will become more clear because you've picked the right words. And again, every message is gonna be different. And we'll talk about that as we get into the reviews of your different projects. Okay, syntax, I talked about syntax. And right now the syntax is pretty clear because the, the islands of information have been pretty well identified. And so each one of these, you know, has its own identity. So as the, the message gets further and further evolved, even here, let's, it's probably right about here where the syntax is about at the limit where it doesn't require a lot of work to figure out what's going on. At this point, the, the syntax is starting to get a little tougher. You know, as the islands start to blend together, they start to have, you know, I guess the identity of the islands becomes a little less clear. One of the things you are going to want to do is keep your negative space between your islands as, as open as you can for as long as you can. If you suddenly just plug everything up and every all the islands start to merge together, then everything starts to break down. And that's not the goal. The goal isn't to make a mess. The goal is to make our message interesting and cool and fun to look at. So, so far, this, this, um, this composition is going well, the sequence is going well, and it starts to get a little bit more playful and it's starting to reach the cliff. This may be really at the cliff at this point, you know, the syntax is completely, it's not completely broken down, but it's definitely struggling. As well, we start to get into um, legibility issues, right? Because suddenly these words are starting to struggle against the, a dark background and suddenly it's hard to, you know, to make out the words, right? So that um, the legibility here is starting to suffer. Um, and then as the design progresses, maybe that was it. Oh, there it goes. Um, yeah, that was it. As this design finally reaches the end of the road, it becomes word art. So basically everything is now, you know, big, there's no more syntax, um, but the semantics, you know, brutes and slave, regiment, machine, you are men. So you're getting the idea that there's, you know, that you're supposed to rise above the challenge. And so even though the message itself is kind of, you know, become pretty abstract, the idea, the semantics of the message is still there. Okay, so that's pretty much how it's going to work. Um, as we talked about the semantics and the syntactical role of the type, 
Um, the end result of this project is that you're going to understand that the sequence is the process. And what we're trying to do is, and if you've had my classes before, and even in this class, you, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm all about saving sequentially, right? I keep saying that, save sequentially, save sequentially. Well, this is an actual exercise in doing that. And the reason why it's especially important in typography is because we don't really, we're, I guess, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that we're not necessarily initially comfortable exploring what type can do. It's a little bit like I've never done this before. And so I may not want to, or I may not be comfortable doing it or whatever. And this exercise breaks down that resistance get you the experience of working sequentially because then you have to see what's going on okay and what we'll see then is that this that the message the medium text it becomes the message so the medium as message that's where this comes from it's that we are actually working with the type and the type becomes the message okay um and ideally, then, what you'll see is that there's a definite line between effective and ineffective typography. Most of the time, it's ineffective because it's just flat boring. But it can also get a little crazy, and then it becomes ineffective because it's just too crazy. The semantics and the syntax have broken down. Our goal is to see that you at least have a good idea when that line is crossed. And this is what I call the cliff. When you fall off the cliff, you know where the edge was. And so our goal is to reach that point and then fall off. And then probably a step or two back from the cliff is where it's going to be really, really cool. So that's our goal. How far can we go and make the syntax and the semantics work? Readability and legibility is all good. And it still looks really, really cool. Okay. So we've got to push it further so we know where it is when we look back on it. Okay. So um, anything else that I want to say there? No, I think that's it. So that's it, kids.